In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God and man. This is the second lesson uh, from the from the Coptic uh, curriculum. Uh, we will in this um, in this lesson we'll be uh, studying the difference uh, between Coptic and Greek, which means uh, when you look at a word, uh, whether you can tell it's a Coptic or a Greek um, or a Greek noun. Uh, the reason this is usually helpful is because of uh, some pronunciation for some words. Uh, so as I don't know, like a word like this one that sort of like has a letter K, it could have a different it could have a different pronunciation de depending whether the word is Greek or Coptic. So let's say you have this word. Actually, a fun one is this one. This word here has different pronunciation and entirely different meanings. Uh, whether it's in if it's in Coptic or Greek, this is F she in Copt in Greek, which means prayer, but also F key in Coptic, which means the being. So we're gonna go some uh, over some of the uh, like the basic rules to differentiate between Coptic and Greek. Uh, usually, you can even practice it more when you know that some hymns are um, are Greek hymns. You're gonna see a lot of them being repeated. It will help you telling whether it's a Greek or Coptic hymn. If it's a Greek hymn, most of the time you don't have to bother with understanding what it means because it's Greek, not Coptic. However, some many Coptic hymns will include Greek words. Okay. Um, so let's start with uh, some rules. Uh, they will look like they're hard to memorize, like a lot of rules, but eventually you're just gonna know them over time. And over time, you can actually just by listening to the word, you can tell whether it's Greek or Coptic. So the first rule we have here is, if you have any of those five letters, this is a Greek word, which is gamma, delta, zeta, xi, psi. How to memorize them? You just know them, and you will eventually you will practice. You will get to see them over time. Like this is one of the general rules. Uh, it's not usually memorized, but usually with the other rules will help you knowing for sure it's a Greek word. Uh, however, there's an exception. There's the word anzib. Anzib is the only Coptic word that has a zeta in it, and it means school. Any other word like here you have like Gabriel, Angelos. These are all Greek. Uh, Diakon is also Greek. Here it's like Zenzen, which means lizard. Xay and say like uh, Psalmos, this is Greek. Xay like uh, Axeyo, this is also Greek. Okay, the second rule we have here, which is pretty common, is when you have the epsilon pronounced as an E. Like an example is Kyrie. So Kyrie is a Greek word that means Lord. Actually, the Coptic equivalent is Nib. Need means master or actually a choice also. Uh, sorry, this is master and this is lord, which is the same as kyrie. So choice and kyrie, kyrie, when you say kyrie, eleison, that is a Greek. So when you have an epsilon, that trumps as a e. But if you have anything that's like a v, let's say, uh, what's the word? Mav. Mav is mom in Coptic. That's Coptic. Okay, the third one, if you have any of those prefixes, this is the most common one and the one that will make your life pretty easy, uh, uh, much easier. Uh, if you have any, if you have any of those like, prefixes, those are, uh, those are um, Greek words. So here's like pro, so when you say like, it be prosefshi or para, uh, parakleto, I'm not sure actually, arsh is like arshi erefs, so like the head, uh, it means, usually means head. Omo means one, so like homogeneous. Kata is according to, so it's like kata, a uh, kata niangelos. Uh, yeah, and then uh, sin. Uh, sin, I think it means with or by, but I'm not sure. But those are Greek, so I'm not really sure what they always mean. Uh, but usually when you say like this, the most common ones be like pro, para, arch, omo, kata, sin. Those, those are. Those words, with those prefixes, when you see them, you know it's a it's a Greek word for sure. Um, here is one. Uh, here is the also the one that's also popular is the suffixes. So if it ends with those ones, most of the time, it's uh, it's it's it's, it's, it's Greek. Sometimes it's Coptic, it's just like any other language. So you have us, os, is, an, on, in. Obviously, this is like the most common one, the os one, or like the cosmos. That's a very common one. Uh, but obviously, like any other language, you can have a language that has a word that ends with "os." Like, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but there will be some that it, it just could happen. But most of the time, those are actually Greek suffixes. Like they're part of their own grammar to make up nouns and stuff. We're gonna look at some examples and try to apply those. Uh, the first word we have is "kosmos." I can see an "os" at the end, so I know it's Greek. 
So if I know it's Greek, I can know that the sima is going to pronounce as a Z, not an S. The next one we have here is tre, yes. We have the S, which means Trinity. We have Doron, we have an on at the end, which means gift. Then we have synagogi, we have seen, uh, sina, sorry, yeah, synagogi. And we have seen, so you know it's Greek. And then pros, that's Prospora, uh, which means the offering, so we have a pro, also prophetis, as prophet, then you have para, paraclete, then tiseia, uh, I would say it's a y is a Greek, because you have a c, and you have, it's the e, that's epsilon that pronounced as an e, so you know it's Greek, tiseia means sacrifice, I think the Coptic equivalent is shushu, yeah, sorry, that's right, um, Shoushi, Shoushi means uh, sacrifice in Coptic. C say as in Greek. Then Arshi, Arshi means like high priest. So when you say an Arsh, you know it's it's Greek. Okay, some some of the stuff that would sure be Coptic. If you remember in the letters, you know that the last seven letters are coming are not in the Greek language, but they are coming from the Demotic writing, which is the previous development of the Egyptian writing, which eventually became Coptic. Um. Chai, fai, chai, chimati. Okay, so those are the letters that at the end. There are some exceptions, and we're gonna mention why. Uh, but if you have, if most of the words actually, I think it's missing chima. So if if it's one of the seven, except the huri, which we're gonna explain why. If it's one of the le the seven letters or the six letters that come at the end, you know for sure it's it's not it's not in it's not Greek. It's definitely comes like why because the Greek cannot represent it in its own languages, which means it's not a Greek language. It's not a Greek word, therefore it has to be Coptic for sure. An example is shuri. You have a shima. You have a sifi, which has a fe. The Greek don't have an f. They have a ph, but they don't have an f. They don't have an I uh, have an sh that is followed by an u. They have they have only the k, but if it's pro if it's if it's like followed by an a, and then we have ehmut. Uh, well, ehmut you can't really tell because it has a huri, but however it has a jinkim. You remember the jinkim also is is Coptic. It does not exist in Greek. So if you see a jinkim in a properly written text, it should be Coptic for sure. And then also you have it trompi. Trompi means stuff. However, the only exception we have is the huri. The reason the huri is an exception is is because it's a um, it's a sound of a h, huh, which exists in Greek. However, it's not represented. So in modern, well, in New Testament Greek, you'd have a word like apostolos. If it comes in in some in some written, they would have this accent on it. I guess that's how it's done, and it will mean there is a there is an h sound. However, they do not represent it with a letter. They represent it with just just a sound. How because it could appear and could not appear. A good example we have is we have Irini Posse. So you see it's Irini. However we say if oro ente t also he if oro ente t hirini. So it's this exact same thing that means peace, however one of them would have a h, a h h sound in front of it. The reason is when it comes, I think when it it's just a, it's a Greek thing. It's like when it comes between in a certain place, it just has the the iota would have a sound on top of it. However, in Coptic, because we have a letter for the h, so we represent we represent the entire thing. So a a Greek word is hirini. However, if you actually write it, if you actually want to write it in just in Greek, it would be irini. Also, like a word like hymnos. So you see, there's an a, there's an epsilon that from says like an e, so it's hymnos. However, because it has an h sound, and hymnos means hymn. Hopefully, you guessed it. Uh, it has a hori in front of it. However, uh, like just a word is hos, is fully is fully is fully Coptic. So you would only have the rule when the hori comes in the at the beginning of a word. If it's anywhere inside the beginning, so let's say tob, tob, which means ask. It means it's that's definitely Coptic. However, if it's in the in the beginning, uh, you, you probably can't tell. Until, but if you look at hymnos, you know for sure it's Greek. If you look at hos, well, if you, especially like this one, hos, it's a hos eruf. Um, uh, you can't. Actually, I'm not sure if that's even a word. But in case you see something similar, you can't really tell. But actually, this one is big Greek, Coptic. Okay, I think we are done. This is some practice. Uh, let's actually do some practices and then the rest you're gonna have some homework.
Okay, so for the practice, Coptic or Greek. So I'm gonna read Shuri, the Shima. So I have a sorry, I have a shy. It's definitely Coptic. I don't need to think more. Uh, here you have Glory. I see a Delta. I see XA. Both of them are both of them are for sure Greek. Then I go. I have a Ka, He. Okay, here I have a Huri. A Huri is not in the beginning, so it's not like a sound on top of a top of a vowel in the beginning. So I know for sure it's Coptic because it's one of the letters that comes at the end. Have C say yeah, I see the I see the epsilon pronounces in long E, so I know for sure it's Greek. Then I have a Ghar, a Rama once you see it, you know for sure it's Greek. Then here you have Shum, I see a shy, because that's one of the last letters, so I know for sure it's Coptic. Then I have he, I'm not sure. I see a he and then I see a gen, I see a so I see a Jenga that comes uh that comes in the uh that comes in the well it comes anywhere, it's one of the Coptic letters only so because it's definitely Coptic then also I have Sa I'm not sure and then I see a Saji I see a Hajenga again so it's definitely Coptic see a Pros so once I see a Pro I know it's Greek therefore when I see a K I know it's either I know it's not a K for, I know it's not a K but I know it could be a SH or a KH however because it's followed by an Omega it becomes a KH so it's Pros Homen so that's a Greek word and the last one, I simply see a Jinkim, and I also see a Phi, both of them will tell me it's a Coptic word for sure. Uh, and here it's followed by some homeworks. Alright, uh, and then next, in the next lesson we'll be going over definite and indefinite articles. You can actually, now you can actually look over words and you can tell it's a word, so the word is a noun for sure, not a verb or not, nothing else.